is <clears throat> do states have the capacity to handle um, all that is being thrown at them by this act right now because uh, so much is needed if the states have to take up this responsibility Baru, my answer will always be yes mm -hmm. they have the capacity uh, whether they now have the capability capability it's mm -hmm. another thing i cannot uh, uh, you know alluded to <clears throat> but the truth of it is every state that is serious about the economic growth of their states knows that power plays a critical role for them to survive. In any aspect you want to look at it, when you go to even states that are concentrating money in agricultural stuff, you want to process some of those things. And what do you need? Power. All those, your machinery, what do they rely on? It's power. Even for the citizen uh, who stays in that state, for them to have good education, you need power. So that the kids can read and do what is needful at every point in time. And that's why I will always tell you that uh, while the current president was uh, a governor in Lagos State, he initiated this IPP project uh, in some areas, uh, which was uh, a big challenge between him and the federal government. And now signing this, uh, uh, the new Electoral Act, empowering the state. Some states are already lashing on it. I, I read the other time uh, that on those states is already concluding the law to enact it. And part of the things they are doing is that you have a level distribution company cutting across different states states. How do I have a chunk of some of these things? You see, there are, uh, 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 investing in electricity is huge, but it's worth doing. I must give you that because it's the backdrop of every development you can talk about. And until we start, you know, decentralizing things from the central, we may not get it wrong. And that's why I'm happy with the electoral okay. act. Yeah. We may not get it right. So, until we start decentralizing, you see, take it off the national grid. Let's domesticate it. Like what Dr. Oni said, I should be able to know areas that I can collect good revenue from in my state to augment the rural area. You know, it's just like taxation. You know, you take from those that have, use it to actually augment those that are less privileged to take care of them. And the federal government will not have understanding of that. From the central, how much knowledge do you have of that? So it's only a state that understands that people that stay on Banana Island you know, stay on the island, understand they can afford to pay so much, which I can use in compensating somebody that is staying at the interior multi, uh, part of Badagri, for example. So, at the state level, you are able to balance things, provide, uh, you know, electricity here, provide here, let those people pay this much and get. So, having each state understanding their peculiarity and having an handshake, you see, it may not just be a state. A state can develop to the extent that I will definitely be selling power to another state. Mm. That's right. And our law will collaborate. I might have the resources you may not have, and I'll provide the bedrock at which you can ride on. Only provide the service for you, you pay for the service, rather than investing in the capital infrastructure of which you have. So it's a matter of balancing act. And mm. I can tell you that if the state understand their onions in this particular thing, they will go a very long way. I've seen legal states, you know, lashing on this. I'm sure they are working on the laws to perfect it. Don't forget that legal states have this uh, electricity board yeah. that manages some of these activities. If we can conclude on this, Lagos is at advantage. What do I mean? We have two distribution companies that we can have synergy with, Ikeja and Eko, and see how much of the problem they are faced with, how can we collaborate to solve the problem, uh, like we're saying, decentralize some of those things to go to little gritty of some of the areas. I can tell you that if our economic must grow, mm -hmm. we must get the power sector right. Because everything rely and count on. Just look at the few days that uh, Amy was servicing their uh, maintenance. I'm sure you know what you and I feel. It think. wasn't funny. It wasn't an interesting thing. So you can imagine the impact on individual, not to talk of the Business. businesses that are to rely on, you know, that power supply. Even if it is 12 hours you are giving us, we'll make use of the alternative power supply we have, at least to augment it. Not taking out that 12 hours and making those things. So people appreciated the the, the need to that, you know, the <laughs> generating country, a company like AB is bringing to table. And that's why we say power is strategic and government must be intentional. State government should capitalize on the act and see how they can give value 
value not just you know making laws that you must be able to give value in the power sector and with that a lot of you know the number of artisans that we can that can develop great things that we can even export out to neighboring countries but we are there a lot of them have abandoned the creativity in them and they are driving Okada on the road mm. Mm. right because there is failure in the power sector right yeah. dr only let me come to you again um talking about um against the backdrop of the what happened you know, with the Igbe, because I got the notification from EKJ Electric maybe like three or four days after, uh, you know, <laughs> heat has already dealt with me seriously. Uh, and then we were now like, ah, why is it that they're just telling us now that this is just maintenance because of the uh, gas, uh, you know, supply or something, whatever it is that happened. But, you know, we generate our power from, you know, thermal, we have thermal generation of about 70%. We've got that of hydro, which is about 20 point something percent, and that of renewable, 2%. Now, if EGMI, for instance, what supply, the gas supply or whatever source that we really bank on now is due for maintenance, what other alternative can we rely on so that we do not have to wait, you know, for, for eons of years uh, for that to be taken care of before we are able to, you know, get power so that we'll have a seamless power supply? Is there any alternative to all of this? design and implementation of that market design you know you would always have and i did mention spinning reserves you'd have certain um plants that kick in once a particular plant needs to go for maintenance so all of this should be part of the market design you know and i understand our market design like i say our policies are good is implementation we have a reasonably good market design but not all of it is implemented that's why if states take over, they then need to understand how to design both retail and wholesale markets. I don't think every state will succeed. That's why you have a federal system of government where the strong states can move ahead of the weaker states and the federal government can support the weaker states. I think some states who don't have the capacity because creating an electricity market is not just generation plants. <laughs> there's scheduling, there's all sorts, there's market operation, there's system operations, there's all sorts that many states I am very sure cannot do. You know, states that can maybe not even supply water. States that have issues with traffic lights and being able to coordinate traffic. You can't. It's, it's not that straightforward. But some states will succeed. So I agree with my colleague, but I don't think every state will. Now, it's providing those alternatives. Providing something that can kick in. And that's why you have ancillary services in, in electricity market design. So that, that's just the answer to that. Apart from that, you then have encouragement of um individual homes using solar panels having distributed <coughs> generation decentralization and particularly in the rural areas you see people use solar panels now it goes to then cost and whether there's both cross subsidy and subsidy from government cross subsidy is where um, the bigger guys are able to pay more while the um, the guys who can really afford pay much less and that the, the, the bigger guys pay a bit more to take care of that difference because the uh, guys who are the poor cannot pay a lot. That's cross subsidy. Then there's also subsidy. Government does pay subsidy. We just don't know in the power sector because uh, and government has been paying subsidy and looking to phase that out because for a long time electricity tariffs were lower than what they should be because it's easy to know. Look at what the inputs are. Look at gas pricing. So to answer your question directly, ancillary services, particularly um, spinning reserves and and those sort of things. To kick in and also if you have a strong schedule system that knows when when there are issues um are, are throughout the network and can quickly deal with those issues and of course consumer consumer protection um, treating consumers well letting them know ahead of time if there are going to be issues those are the ways to deal with those sort of things and maybe having a distribution a, a, a network where you can have different um, end user suppliers so gen different generation plants can always supply and you can ha contract with them and just just supply the distribution network will just be conduits and the distribution companies will just manage those conduits and different suppliers it's just like when you go abroad you see different people coming to meet you that i can supply you electricity it'll be slightly cheaper or I'll provide ex extra incentives it's still the same plants it's just that different people buy from those plants and these regional networks are just conduits so those are the ways i think those can be dealt with Right, let's bring the conversation back to the studio, Chasson. Uh, the Electricity Act is looking to promote transition from fossil fuel to renewable 
energy in Nigeria, and we know how Nigeria has these resources when it comes to the renewables. So Nigeria is rich in wind, solar, everything that is necessary for uh, renewables, but we seemingly are not scratching the surface with regards to that. Um, what do you think perhaps we should do now, um, looking at the fact that we are trying to have stable power supply alternatives for people to explore? Uh, I, I'll take it back to the government. Uh, if you must lead, you lead by example. How many of uh, uh, the government agencies are investing in the, re in the renewables that you can talk about? The law still rely on the fossil that we're trying to translate, uh, to move from to renewables. Mm -hmm. We should start seeing situations where government can have massive investment in uh, possibly solar and distribute to people around them. You have a good network of uh, you having that investment at government agency, even though you are using uh, taxpayers' money. But at the same time, the people around you are benefiting immensely uh, from that particular investment of yours. So we should start thinking in that direction. They should take the, the, the leadership by providing direction and also give incentives to uh, 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 individuals, organizations, corporate organizations that are investing in this renewable and encourage a situation where they can, uh, whether it's by CSR or by means of reducing the cost, provide those uh, 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 supply to the people around them. You see, you can never have a balanced act in such a way that every one of us, as we speak, how many houses are having even the solar panel that we're talking it's about? Expensive. It's, it's expensive to afford. But do you, have, do you know you can have a situation where you, as an individual, can even generate that, because you are generating it to your home, but do you exhaust it? The answer is no. Where you can supply your neighbor at a cost, if we have good regulations, to monitor that. And with that, you are part, you know, partly generating and you are giving, because the other party might need it and pay a uh, you know, certain amount to you to sustain the maintenance of that party. <coughs> we should start becoming creative uh, uh, in this sector because it's, jamming, it's critical to the growth of our economy. Renewable is the way to go. But when you talk about the cost, I'm sure average people, average person cannot afford it. Uh, it's a long-term investment that you need to recoup your cost uh, back. But you must start opening up the system. Like what, was, uh, what, what we saw, you know, uh, uh, obtained in Germany that we are inviting to assist us in this. The, it got to a level that they were actually begging people to use supply because they have more supply than the demand that they are getting. And it's because renewable energy are plugged into it. Do we have a central way where if I have solar panel, I can give back to the national grid in such a way to increase, you know, the bottom line? That was what happened in Germany. A lot of people generate this power in their respective home, but gives back to the government at a cost, which they later redistribute to other people. We must start the thinking in that uh, uh, line in such a way that companies, corporate organizations, individuals that have the net worth of bringing this investment in are able to plug into it and distribute those things. If you open up the business, a lot of people have idle funds that they want to invest in the mm -hmm. sector. But when they, when they don't have, you know, the right implementation policy, just like I said, you have the law, and after two, three months, you see those laws repealing back, and it's affecting your bottom line as an organization. Mm -hmm. You won't have that confidence. So we must be consistent in our policy direction in such a way that even when investors are ready to plug in into some of those things, I, I, I can tell you if the space is opened up in the metering system, a lot of people are willing to invest and collaborate with those that have the technical know-how and see how they can close the gap. But what have we seen? Even when we created MAP, those that are MAP are complaining mm. that they are not having, you know, the, the, the necessary support, policies from a certain here and there. And that actually, we've, we've had cap mill, it did not, we've had MAP, we've have complained over it. You ask yourself, why do we have this fantastic policy? And when it comes to implementation, it will only last us for maybe a, a, a few months and we get back to status quo of the problem. Talking about renewables, I know we all have septic tanks in our homes and I've heard that that can also generate power. Um, we, we, can, we can tap power from that. You can generate power from diverse... I'm sure you know even with uh, coal, mm. you can do that with yes. water. A lot of us mm. is very close oh, sorry, to... Sorry, that, that's not my question. I'm actually keen on... Um, the, the issue of 
looking into, probing into how the power sector has fared, you know, over the years, because there, there have been a lot of calling on the, you know, president to look into, you know, different sectors and the activities that have gone on. For instance, you know, we, at a point in time, were, you know, shouting, talking on top of, shouting on top of our voice about the 16 billion, uh, 16 billion dollar electricity project that was meant to be done in Ogun State, I guess, uh, under the pres former president of just regime, mm -hmm. which President Buhari tackled Obasanjo on and asked, where is the power? Or let me just say it properly, where is the power? Uh, you know, he, and then Obasanjo re responded saying that I'm ready for probe. So shouldn't we, you know, begin to look into how much had been sunk into what we are not able to get today. It's not only in the power sector, and that's the problem. No, because we are talking with. about power. Yeah, uh, you see, it's the problem we are faced with. A lot of uh, funds are, you know, put into some of these things, but we don't ask questions. We don't even monitor it later to say that what those funds are actually meant for are what we're using it for. And is there value addition to it? All you hear is that can we have reinvestment into something that someone has actually worked on, but we never monitor. And that's the problem that we have as a country. Most of the time, when you hear of fantastic policy, people lash on it to enrich individuals. And there are no questions to it. The, the whole thing we just going to say, let the sleeping dog lies and let's move on. At least that has gone. Forgetting that it is taxpayers' money that we are actually putting into some of those things without getting value for it until we start calling ourselves up. When you want to do something, you bring it out on board and the government is able to invest in it. That's why people like me will tell you that until we start running the government as if we are running the corporate organization. We are the board asking questions. And who are the board that will ask you questions? They are the citizens. Because we are the taxpayers that are paying those taxes of which you are using those funds to actually create those infrastructure that you claim to. So when you invest over $16 billion and somebody says, call me out for a question. What question do you have? We are not seeing the value as an individual. And you say you, so it will come up and defend you. Anybody can defend anything. But until we are intentional to say, no, it's not about you coming to give us excuses why you failed. But we actually allocated those funds. And you must just uh, 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 explain, possibly behind the bar. Then we'll start sending those caution to individual to know when you a lot are still happening. A lot was invested during the last administration. What value do we get for it? Mm -hmm. People are still complaining that there is no regular power supply. And it's really impacting on our economy. We must be accountable. We must be transparent in some of the things we are doing. And people that have failed us, mismanaging uh, some of these funds allocated to them, should be shown the way where they should be in order to serve as, you know, deterrent to order that, to know that you don't play with the public funds and go scot free with it. All right, let's go to uh, Dr. Oni as we gradually wrap up this conversation. Uh, your final thoughts on what we can do differently for 2024 so Nigerians can ensure stable power supply? Okay, first, um, the minister needs to sit up a bit more, in my view. Um, secondly, there's need to support states who want to um, go it their own way, um, generation, transmission, regulate those aspects. There's need for NERC to work with those state regulators there's need to complete those transmission projects that have been going on, and there's need to ensure um, uh, uh, there's need to ensure that there's no political interference with the regulator. Because one thing the regulator has done is they've issued very brilliant regulations, orders, policies, but implementation, in my view, has been a problem, and I think it's political influence. So that's another thing that needs to be done. Because if if the regulator or regulators, when we have state regulators are independent, then things will work better. We do, uh, enforce the Electricity Act around electricity theft. When people steal, you ensure that they are dealt with. Let's stop throwing money at problems. Let's understand what the problems are, and let's have an integrated approach. Because part of reasons why, and I agree with my colleague in the studio um, about corruption, but in addition to that, if you spend so much on generation, and you don't deal with transmission and distribution. You have stranded stranded capacity. You have the generation that is there, but it's stranded. So it's a holistic approach we must now adopt. Understand the problem in each segment, and then deal with them individually. And that approach, I think that's the way forward. Right. 
Okay, I hear that uh, we have to wrap this conversation up now. So I would have loved to hear your perspective on what we should do differently for 2024, but uh, our time is up. Well, I must thank you, gentlemen, Dr. Ayodele Oni, Chairman and Partner of the Energy Practice Group at Bloomfield Law Practice, as well as Public Affairs Analyst, Solusha Songkwande, for your time on the program. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. Right. But this is where we'll draw the